Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is the last day, right? Yay, we made it, friends. The last day of the March Deco Day Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this poem. And, uh, yeah, this is, we're going to be, I mean, if you've been following along, uh, you know that my streak is at 1094 right now. And what I mean by that, by saying that, is that, uh, we're going to probably do all of April as well, just to be frank, so I'm just putting down my phone. Um, so, let's do it together, you know? Either, even if you get it, even if you don't, maybe we'll learn from each other, leave a comment, and all this good stuff. Okay, so first of all, the first thing I saw was mod for some reason, so let's, uh, let's sing the mod song. I go mod, 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 before I sing this, and then I do this. Basically, this is a, it's not a template, but it's basically code that I know won't compile, but by the time I get to it, it'll be like, oh yeah, Larry, come on, man. Before you submit, you have to remember the mod. Okay, so let's take a look. A uh, number of ways to cut a pizza. So given a rectangular pizza represents rows times columns containing A's and dots, uh, and given the integer K, and it's a hard part, by the way, uh, you have to cut the pizza into K pieces using K minus 1 cuts. For each cut, you can choose the direction, uh, vertical or horizontal. Then you get to choose a cut position at the cell boundary and cut the pizza into two pieces. Of course, you have a square pizza, but you know, in New York, there vertical pieces or rectangular pieces. But what the apple? Come on. You could have at least made it like pepperoni or something, I guess. Anyway, I don't know. I mean I'm a New Yorker. New Yorker. You know, how can you be talking about pizza? Why is it a pizza? Just make it like I don't know, pie or something. Eh. Apple pie? I don't know. Anyway. Eh. Sorry, this is triggering pizza. Uh, eh, eh. Anyway, okay. If you cut the pizza vertically, you give the la left part of the pizza to a person. If you cut the pizza horizontally, uh, give the upper part of the pizza to a person. Give the last piece of pizza to the last person. We turn the number of ways such that cutting the pizza in such that the each each piece contains at least one apple. Since the apple, uh, since the apple, since the answer can be a huge number, mod it. Okay. I mean, I'm gonna look at the constraints real quick, but really. I knew what I wanted to do, and the question is just whether the constraints allow us to do it. Um, yeah, but basically the idea really is just perforce like some things with dynamic programming is. The idea, and there are a lot of things that are kind of, uh, maybe in this particular case, implementationally a little bit tricky, and in that part of the implementation, there is some understanding and pattern eve from practice things that you can figure out, but, but yeah, but that's what I would say. And I'm trying to think how much of it is necessary. But the idea is basically brute force um, with memorization. I mean, you could do it in, a, uh, you know, you could also do it bottoms up, obviously. But the idea in the brute force is that, okay, let's see if we could cut one off the top, two off the top, three off the top, four off the top, dot, 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 right? Uh, and then you could see if you could cut up uh, one off to the left, two off to the left, three off to the left, dot, dot, dot. And then part of that is just checking whether you can see if there's a, there's an apple or pepperoni. I'm going to call it pepperoni for the rest of this video. I'm going to mess up, but I'm going to try. Uh, if there's going to be a pepperoni on that thing, and of course, that's, uh, uh, a sub problem, if you will. Okay, we're doing dynamic programming. I'm using sub problem, really, but but that's basically the idea, right? Um, okay. And so that now you have two problems, right? Or maybe not two, but you reduced one problem, the number of ways, blah blah blah, um, into another problem of okay, brute force. And let me just write this out, right? Uh, maybe that'll make it slightly, uh, you know. And then the second problem is finding the uh, pepperoni in a in a in a rectangle in a good time right because obviously you could iterate for it but it, it may be too slow right so okay so let's just say we have count of um uh, how do you want to do it let's just say x y and k left right and this is going to uh, of course, we have to talk about what these words mean, or the, the inputs mean, or at least we don't always have to do it, but for this one, uh, you know, uh, if you're clear, clear about things to yourself, then you can kind of, you know, if you run into edge cases, then you can really ask yourself, okay, 
you know, is it plus one? Is it minus one? Is it not either of those things? You know, uh, that's what defining means. So basically now this is rectangle starting from row X. And Y is rectangle starting from uh, column Y. Well, maybe another way of putting it is XY is that the, the, is the upper left um, corner or cell of this, of the remaining uh, rectangle or pizza. And then K is just number of cuts left. And in this case now, then it'll be just count of uh, 0, 0, and then K, right? Okay. And uh, yeah, so if K is equal to 0, and then we have to have some magic function, right? So if, <clears throat> because, because basically, um, the reason why we need a, a magic function well, we'll see in a second, but basically we need a, another, the last slice, because basically if k is equal to zero, that means we're not cutting anymore, right? If we're not cutting anymore, uh, this is the last slice. And if this is the last slice, we have to check that it has an apple in it, right? So if contains apple of, uh, let's say, xy inclusive to, uh, I didn't write the words, uh, number of rows is equal to pizza, number of columns is equal to pizza sub zero, and and uh, let's say this is an inclusive, so it's going to be R minus one, C minus one, right? Uh, so if this contains apple to that cell or with that that rectangle, then we return one. This is one way to do it. Otherwise, we return zero because that means that we ran out. The last slice doesn't have any apples. We become very sad. Okay, right? Um. Yeah, okay, right? So I'm just kind of making sure that I'm structuring it okay. Yeah, okay. I mean, I do worry about performance, to be frank. Um, so I don't know if this is going to time out now because. Uh, what is it? 50 Q? Oh no. 50 times 50 times 10 times 100. It's 2.5 mil. I might rewrite it in another language later. But basically, okay, so we'll, let's do a quick analysis, right? Um, we don't know what this cost thing get is in terms of cost, but but basically, for, okay, now, now let's do, you know, vertical, uh, yeah, vertical cuts, it doesn't really matter, but, or like in terms of like either vertical first or, so then let's say we go i is equal from x plus 1 to, oh, I, I think I messed up, this is already obviously uh, horizontal cuts because we're doing, yeah, we're doing rows, so yeah, whoops, right, then basically if it contains apple, of x um okay so yeah x x plus one no 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 just x and x oh no no sorry x and i yeah x and i and for and from y no why just y goes to c minus one right yeah, so basically now we have two halves, right? We have the left half and then the right half. So this is the left half and contains apple from i plus 1, r minus 1, y, c minus 1. Then we, uh, okay, so we have some result is equal to 0. And then you have this, we added to count of, I think I messed this up. Or I, I'm the way that I'm doing it is a little bit awkward. Let me think. I think I should. Yeah, I think this is more accurate. I think that's why I was a little bit confused. Okay, I think this is good though. Yeah, this counts. Now we're chopping off it at the i. So now this is i plus one y k minus one, and of course, yeah. Okay, and here we assume that k is already greater than 1, because if it's 0, we always return something. So it cannot be, unless you, I guess, pass in something to begin with, that's negative. But then that's, you know, 
your being silly. Yeah. Um, and then maybe, you know, modded by mod, of course. And then now vertical cut is going to be the same thing, right? For I in, in range of Y, uh, yeah, Y to C, it contains apple from, uh, I guess X doesn't change. So it's X from uh, that, right? Y to I and contains apple of uh, same thing. And then I plus one, C minus one. This is cutting close to the edge, but uh, yeah, and then if that's the case, then we cut it vertically. So we have x, we have i plus 1, and then k minus 1, and then we mod the stuff, and then at the end, we return r and should be okay. So that's basically the structure. Um, let's just say for you know, we're, we're going to test to see this. Is, I mean, this is actually going to be too slow still, but um. Uh, let's just return true for now, right? Um, so what's the complexity here, assuming that this is O of 1? And we don't know that we can convince this to be O of 1. Um, I mean, I, okay, spoiler alert, I do know. But but in theory, at this point of, of our... Just so, just so that we're clear, but, um, but hypothetically, this is the part of this code where we're like, well, okay, now can we, you know, make some... What is the analysis of this, right? Um, before we go on, because if this is already too slow, if we assume this is all of one and this is already too slow, then we need to do more optimizations before even contemplating this thing, right? So, okay. So what's the complexity here, right? X could go to, uh, it's all of R. Uh, y can go to C. I mean, I guess just R and C, right? And then K is obviously just K, right? So this is going to be, so the number of possible inputs is distinct possible inputs. It's all of R times C times K, right? And then um, each input costs O of R plus C, right? And technically it's O of plus C times times uh, this apple function, right? Uh, I, mean, I, I, I technically is pepperoni. I don't know. I'm just keeping consistent. It's hard, right? But if we assume this is all of one for now, right? So if we assume that's all of one, then the, the each input cost of R plus C because that's just uh, the two loops, right? Um, in time, sorry. Then total time is going to be O of R times C times K times R plus C, right? And if you plug it in, this is I'm plugging in right now. Fifty times fifty. Uh, typo. 50 times 50 times 10 times 100, right? And that's going to be 2.5 mil, which to be honest, is a little bit slow already, right? 2.5 mil, if you ask me. So I'm, I have no confidence about this. Uh, I might cheat a little bit later in a way that I'll show you. But, um, but I think technically speaking, for one test case, that will be fast enough. And to be honest, I know that this is going to be a good enough in another language, maybe. Maybe Python is a weird edge case where it's not. Um, but then, um, what was I going to say? I forgot what I was going to say. Hmm. Old people problems. Just uh, uh, being forgetful, you know? Maybe I've been having too much sugar. Maybe that's that's also the reason. Let me get uh, water real quick because I've been talking a little bit too much. <laughs> so... But yeah, but but this also, of course, assumes that we memorize, right? So let's let's do the memorization now. Why not, right? So let's just say count has cash is you go to uh, this is annoying to write. Oh no no no, it's fine. It's times ten, right? Yeah, okay, that's not so bad. Because I was, I, I didn't do the math. So this is the total time, but for each input cost O of one space, because we only have to store one number. So total space is actually only O of R times C times K, which is going to be, me pulling up calculator is what I'm pulling. 50 times 50 times 10 is 25,000, which is, you know, easy to do uh, relatively. So yeah, so this is going to be this times... I always forget which direction this goes. Uh, 
right? And then the cache is just say none, right? <clears throat> uh, and in this particular, mm, no, I don't know. That's true. Okay, never mind. For a second. Uh, oh, so now we can just go. Well, if we have this cache, then we return the cache, right? And if not, <clears throat> then we do the calculations, then we get the answer, we're very happy. Oh, oops, this is true. And then cache of da -da 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 -da. Of course this is true. Why would you ever put this as false, right, past Larry? I think I did that yesterday, that's in case you didn't get to. Uh, okay, let's run it real quick. Uh, oh, K is not defined. I changed it to big K somewhere by accident. Whoops, didn't I? Uh, yeah. Because I was using K for the big O. Uh, okay. Oh, I named it account has cash. <laughs> Maybe spoiler word as to why, but um, yeah. Hmm. Oh, 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 I'm being dumb. Of course, this has to be. Of course, this goes out now. This has to be. Do, 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 do. Do I need that part? That part, this part I don't know that I need, but it's probably fine. Okay, I mean obviously this is going to be wrong because we always, as a return, true. But the thing that I'm actually testing on is, um, and there's only 10, no, I, I was wrong. Uh, the case that I actually want is when R and C is equal to 50, right? And K is say 10, because that's where you have the most recursing Recursing, recursive, recursion. Uh, yeah. So let's just say, do, 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 do. what is it? Fifty. Oh man. So five, ten, two, three, four, five. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then two, three, four, five, ten. Two, three, four, five. Right. Hopefully, I didn't make an error. Okay, I mean, it's still gonna be the wrong answer, obviously. What I want is actually um, uh, just put R, C, and K. Just to make sure. I mean, it's fine either way. But, but I just want. I mean, I guess even if it's forty nine, it's okay because. Yeah. So fifty, fifty, ten. So yeah. So this is the worst case. And assuming that we have all of one. We have seven point uh, seven hundred eighty nine milliseconds, which already is kind of slow. Or it's slow. The the reason why that's slow isn't because it's slow. Is because on lead code, if you haven't ran into this before, and why uh, now running again, it costs one second. The reason why that I have a concern is that in, on lead code, um, but not other other online judges, or not usually anyway. Maybe I'm wrong about that. But uh, um, judges time out, time limit exceeded. Not by the complexity. They don't. They don't know how complex. Or, you know, there's no easy way to check complexity. So they do it by having a time limit, right? And the time limit is usually say 10 seconds or whatever it is. It does. Sometimes they make it bigger, but it doesn't matter, right? The thing is that because they use something called the sum of execution time, meaning that the execution time of all the test cases just added together. So then that means that, and because you don't know how many test cases there are. Um, you know, like maybe my code, like, you know, it takes one second to work for cases. Maybe if that's 40 cases, it's too slow. If that's 20 cases, it's fast enough. How is the, you know, how can you find, like, there's no way to know, right? It's basically the idea. Um, okay. So, okay. So then now let's say for the, for the sake of learning, hopefully this makes sense so far. This is going to be a long video. It is already a long video, but, um, but yeah, let's say you have this so far, and well, now you have to implement this, right? Uh, naively, how would you do it? Well, naively, you would just look through the rectangle, but that could be R times C, right? Like if this is, these are zeros, these are the end, then you know. And if you do it all the time, uh, where's my other thing? You can put, this thing becomes a lie. It's R plus C times R times C, which means this is going to be times another uh, 2,500, which means that this becomes like what? 62 trillion or something. I don't know. Look, I don't. I can't do math, right? Uh, hopefully you did it for me. But either it's 62 trillion or 6 trillion. It doesn't really matter. It is too slow, right? 
Um, so we have to try to do a little bit better. Um, so the way that you would think about doing this, there are a couple of ways you can do it, right? Um, hmm. I'm, I'm just thinking about how to visualize it, so I'm going to just bring up uh, the good old paintbrush. Hang on, sorry, setting it up. So there are a couple of ways you can think about this. So I'm still pressing some buttons. Hang on, friends. Uh, hope everyone's having a great, you know, Thursday. Oh no, that's the one button. Uh, oh, there, there, okay, there we go. Um, yeah. Gosh, drop my pen. Right. And I was gonna do some copy and pasting, but maybe I don't even need to. Hang on. Uh, okay. So let's just say you have. You know, and uh, so, right, something like this, right? And then now, eh, this is <laughs> not the prettiest thing. And then your pepperonis in random places, right? And then the idea is that okay, how can you make queries? Of um of like any arbitrary rectangle, right? Uh, and in this case, the rectangles are actually not. No, I mean they are going to be arbitrary, right? Just because um when you do these queries, when you do a division, you have to check the top half and the left half and all this stuff. So it's going to be relatively arbitrary, even though maybe some of them will be um maybe one part of the query will always be. Um, next to one of the one of the sides or something maybe, but but I think it's still going to be pretty weird, right? So then the there are a couple of ways you can think about this, right? Um, so the way to do this, it turns out, is almost like an idea of prefix sum, but in two dimensions, and if you don't know about prefix sum, maybe it's not that important because now I'm drawing the geometry and hopefully the geometry will, um, you know, the visualization will kind of, you know, you learn from the geometry, right? And the idea here is that, okay, let's say, you know, what is the, the this, how many pepperoni is there in this oops, rectangle, right? Well, <coughs> the number of pepperoni in this rectangle is just turns out to be a decomposition of the number of pepperoni in this rectangle minus the number of pepperoni in uh, I'm going to choose another color hang on uh, minus the number of pepperoni in this rectangle minus the number of pepperoni on this rectangle right so then now basically in a way you're saying that okay you have this rectangle you want to subtract? Oh, whoops! Oh, what the? What is wrong with this thing? Am I like pressing a button by accident? Hmm, maybe I am. Sorry, hang on. Technical difficulties. What is going on with this pen? Did I like drop it a little bit too hard? <laughs> uh, this expensive expense. What? What is going on? Hmm. Sorry, friends. Do you see that? Huh, okay, now it's better. I, uh, that one I actually didn't. Tell. Okay, that's really weird. Okay, anyway, so you have um, you have this rectangle. Oh, I, I you wasted too much stuff. Anyway, you have this rectangle, and then you want to subtract. Oh, uh, what happened? This, this, okay, let me try again. Sorry, friends, technical difficulty. So it is just you go to this rectangle, right? Minus, uh, this rectangle, minus. This uh, this rectangle, right? Eh, sorry, I have to choose another color. So, so now uh, I know that I'm missing one. Hang on. So now, but because of that, we noticed that we subtracted this thing twice. So basically, now you just have to uh, add this back on, right? So now you have three rectangles. Oh, sorry, four. Uh, yeah, four rectangles, right? Um, and the reason why we structure it this way 
is because that now we can pre-process how many pepperonis are there just starting from the corner, right? Now we, 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 we define the question into a question that we can solve a little bit easier. Um, and that's basically the idea. Um, yeah, right? I'm going to write this in a very funky way, I'm not going to lie. Um, but I think, I don't know if this is true, because I usually write it uh, bottoms up and kind of do this pre-processing stuff. But I think I'm going to try to write this in a funky way, um, and maybe it's more intuitive. Leave me, leave me a comment whether you think this is true. Um, yeah. Okay, so basically now, let me try to make sure, I'm just trying to f make sure that uh, my bounds, or I have, to, I have to be very careful with my bounds because I don't want to do off by one. That is why. So basically, this is um, the, the, the number of pepperoni in, um, I'm going to say apples just because all my function names are like this, right? From this corner, and this is, um, yeah, okay, let, let me, how many apples are inside AXAY to BXBY? Uh, inclusive, right? And then, yeah. And then count apples. Oops. Count apple? The uh, uh, the 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 is wrong, but uh, okay, fine. I'm consistently wrong anyway, then I guess. Uh, <laughs> tired, don't want to fix. But yeah, but how many apples are in... Um, x y to r minus one c minus one corner inclusive right that's basically the idea right so as we said it's going to be this minus count apple of so we want bx inclusive so it's going to be x plus one yeah by minus count apple of Wait, 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 is it BY? Wait, uh, let me, you can't see me doing it because I'm too lazy to re-pull it up. I'm just looking at my, 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 my diagram. So, no, 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 this is going to be from AY, right? So it's just the, the, uh, no, no, this is just the fat bottom one. And then now we subtract the, uh, the right side and that's what this will be yeah yeah and then now we add back on that little uh, uh double counted corner of and then that'll just be b1 by plus one right and then this we would just return this is greater than or equal to zero right oh well no this will always, that will always be true it has to be greater than zero <laughs> whoops that would have been a, a painful thing to debug and then count apples um okay right how many apples are there to x why? Well, um, yeah, and you could do this a number of ways. And like I said, in theory, uh, I probably, you know, with not teaching or whatever, I probably just do it bottom, uh, tops, uh, yeah, bottoms up. Uh, if you want to do it that way, it's very similar to how you construct, um, say, a binomial. This should be a uh, binomial. Uh, the 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 the, the uh, exponents of a binomial polynomial, for example, binomial polynomial. That sounds like a song. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway, um, but yeah, but I'm gonna write this a little bit differently, right? So how many apples are there from x to y, or that corner? Well, you could just do a, well. The, one way to slice it is mm, maybe that that's not very smart. Um, yeah, maybe the way that I'm doing it is a little bit weird, now that I think about it. Mm. Oh, no, I, I, I know. I, I'm just trying to be too cute, right? Okay, I got it. I got it. Sorry, friends. Uh, I'm just double-checking that I don't have to my drawing blocking the screen, because sometimes that happens, and then I'm like, I did all this explanation and coding and stuff for no reason. Okay, no, um, okay, so then basically it is just, um, 
return count the number of rows uh, or number of apple on in a row of x plus count apple of x plus one y right um you can think about it as if you have a rectangle now i'm counting the number of apples on the top row and then recursively calculate um uh, uh, the number of apples on the next row, the next rectangle without the top row, right? Um, all right. Uh, I think I need a, 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 the Y there because, yeah. Right. You, this is kind of getting iffy, but I'm still doing it, right? So apple by row, right? An XY uh, is just how many. Ooh, how many apples are in row X starting from column Y, right? And and I need there, there needs to be a base case, by the way. I didn't really do it. I didn't really complete this yet, so uh, I'm aware of it. I'm a little bit slow. This is a half an hour video. There's maybe another five minutes, ten minutes left. I don't know. I'm going very slow. Um, but hopefully it's, it's insightful, right? I'm not doing it just for I don't know wasting time. Maybe I am. I don't know. I'm not even drunk. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Um, okay, so then this is just return count apple by row, same row, y plus 1, plus whether piece of xy is equal to a, right? Yeah, something like that. I mean, we could rewrite it in a second, um, but that's basically the idea, right? Like if da, 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 uh, uh, let's just say p is equal to zero, uh, we increment by one, something like this, right? Uh, and then now let's do the base case. So basically, this idea is the same thing, but now by column, right? So we want to get how many apples are in the row starting from column y. Well, that's just maybe one, maybe zero plus. The rest of the row, right? So that's basically the idea. And in this case, if y is equal to c, then we return zero because now we reach the, the end. That's basically the idea. And here the same thing, right? If x is equal to r, um, then we return zero because well, we just ran out, right? Um, okay. Now we're done, right? <laughs> uh, now I know. Oh, I mean, okay. We're even out of bounds. I probably did some really funky things to do it out of bounds, actually. But, uh, huh. But, oh, yeah, yeah, no, I knew this because, uh, because this can be whatever. Uh, I, X could be out of bounds, is what I mean as well. Or, uh, hmm. That's not true, then, is it? Huh. How, why is it out of bounds? Man. Hmm. As we as we say in the business, yikes. Hmm. Why is this out of, all right, let me double check it real quick. Um I guess I have a debugger actually, but still. Uh, does it tell you? Like, mm, I wish that for th this is such a like if it's an just tell me the index, you know. Like if it's out of bounds, it's fine. But just tell me, you know. Like why not? Let's see if this gives me. It may not. Uh, uh see, it doesn't go all the way to the last one. Uh, okay. Uh, this is only okay. Let me kill this one for now, and then. Huh. So why does this fail for fifty? Also, that was silly. Now I don't have that case anymore. But, eh, uh, well. Um, hmm. That's weird, though, right? Like, there's nothing wrong with these things that... Uh, also, this should be right for these. So I'm, I'm like, really wrong in, in some places. But, hmm. <clears throat> dong, dong, dong. All right, well... Uh, Zero? Is it just always returning zero? Okay. So that, I probably have some way to fix. Um, don't over here, though. Hmm. One time error. Contains apple. 
Du, 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 du. All right. Uh, let's just let me do a quick assert. Hmm. Huh. Well, there you go. Do I have a typo somewhere? X goes to or oh, I goes to R minus one, R minus one, R minus oh. Okay, yeah, okay, whoops. I see. That's probably the other issue, too. Ah, easy to do off by once. Uh, I mean, still wrong. Uh, did I set my assertion? Why did it take away my assertion? Hmm. Let's, double, let's double check this assertion for now. Hang on. Okay, now we're in the de debugging phase. But we're, we're, we're almost there. We're almost there. Hmm. Do they, does it tell me the actual value? No, it just tells that assertion and then... Okay, well, where else could it be? I, I plus hmm. hmm. I mean, this is the only place that we're, you know, running, so. And we only have this is these are small cases, so uh Huh? This doesn't this doesn't fail this. Oh no wait, one zero. Hmm. Okay, that does fail the assertion. So zero zero goes to uh no no wait, that's not I printed this in the wrong way, actually. It's a little bit awkward. Because this actually prints AXBX. So it goes to 1, 0, 0 to 0, 2, which is the entire rectangle. And then it goes to 1, 2 to 0, 2. Did I do, make some typo? Hmm. Uh, the other thing about this problem is that it's very easy to make a typo. And, you know, this problem, uh, the explanation video will probably be very long even if I had not done it live. But as you can see, this is the risk of doing it live. Hope you're enjoying this, but, you know, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. So, okay. So, what are those? Mm, all right, let's print this out in a normal person thing. All right. All right, so zero, zero, uh, which makes sense. And then it checks. So it does, five from zero, zero, it does this check. So then that's zero, 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 two. Uh, okay, so it goes from zero, 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 two. What what is this again? So it's zero zero, zero two. Okay, yeah yeah yeah, that makes sense. And then it does one two. What should this be? One two to zero two. What? Oh. Why am I doing this this way? Oh no, no, I do A X A Y. That's why, Larry. What are you doing? Why is this A X A Y? Who writes this? Oh no, no, no. This is a no. A X X A Y is what? Y is fine. I'm just inputting it in a wrong way because Larry is dumb. Okay, yeah, huh. okay, yeah. What? Why, Larry? Why? Why do you do things like this? Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, why? What is wrong with me? How come I group up the LK? Anyway, it's just a very bad typo slash confusion. Uh, that's all. Let's this is the corner and then okay. Hmm, that's not right. Oops. Is it? Oh no, no. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Maybe. Hmm. All right, let's try again. Okay, I mean, at least we turn one, which is progress, maybe, I guess, hopefully. Uh, and we no longer fail the assertion, so that's also progress. Um, hmm. Maybe now this doesn't fail. 
Because I, I thought that was a little bit weird, but maybe not. Maybe I'm still going out bounds. Oops. Hmm. What am I doing weird then? I should go to C minus one. That's fine. C minus. Eh, this part is still weird though. Oh no, because if this goes to C minus one, then this is just an entire slice. So now this still needs to be that. Hmm. X Y new X new Y okay this is good or uh, correct ish unless I misunderstood the problem no the problem is okay okay uh hmm huh 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 This is just zero. Where is that zero? This is inclusive, right? Okay, now maybe I have to check this. Maybe I have an off by one. Hmm. Should be okay. Maybe. Uh. Alright, well. Alright, more debugging. Sorry, friends. Let's double check this. This is how things work this sometimes. Alright, so some 0 to 0, 2. This is returning 1, which is clearly. Cre oh no. Uh, zero. No, that's true. One zero to two three to two. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, I think one thing that we can do is actually, uh, for the purpose of debugging, um, just do uh, you know, count zero zero of uh, for x is in range of a x a y plus one for y in range of uh b what oh what no b x what. Right? Uh, that's why I got confused, right? Uh, what's it? Uh, okay. If P is XY is equal to A. Yeah. Basically, we're just comparing with brute force. Right? And this is why we have assertions. Oh, well. Okay, so that means that these functions are right. So, so that means that this function is right, right? Um, because it's been, it matches the proof force in every spin. So far, I mean, you know, who knows where this is actually true, but at least for the inputs that we worry about. So then that means that something else is kind of weird about, um, but now that means that we know that this part has an issue. Hmm. Maybe I do have an additional typo. So the same x, we go y plus 1. Right? Yeah. Hmm, okay. Why is it returning? I mean, this one is actually the one, and that's right, but... Hmm. Is it this part? Uh, no, I mean this part looks pretty straightforward, really. Uh, Alright, let's just print out. This, I guess. Uh, okay, so it goes to 1, 2, which is... But that means that we're missing some potential things. Uh, 1, oh no, no, 1, Two, so that's just the last thing, right? But clearly from here, it should also make a call to one, one. So that's why it's wrong. So we have an off by one here somewhere. That's what we're seeing. Right, so this is X. This is X. Huh. 
So I think one thing that we can do um, is that uh, one thing you see is that this is like a square, and sometimes with squares, it's easy that to mix up x, y, and that's what I did a earlier, right? So let's kind of see whether this gives me an error. If this, you know, the the idea here is that if um, uh, now it's out over but the idea is that you know if i have x y mixed it, then there's more ways to kind of give me um our bounds exception and stuff like this um but now it's just very well did i misunderstand this problem that would be funny if i just go all the, uh i mean i knew how to do it the entire way but eh, i don't know uh okay um hmm let's see what am, so i f and even in this one oh I, I guess I could keep this in there just for the. I could run this again for the uh, the three, the new case four. Um, it still looks okay. Or this part of the code looks okay. So I'm I'm convinced that this part is okay at least for now, right? But that means that the only this place that's left. Okay, I, am I missing a row or something? I mean, so if this is x, it chops up the front, right? Uh, let's see. And this is already a long video. Why is it going one two? All right, let's take a look. Uh, hmm. So one 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 with. One cut left is going to be one, okay. I want to see zero, one with two cut with. Wait, did I miss the k minus one somewhere or something? How can you have two? Oh no, yeah, how do you have. Oh no, it's three cuts total. Oh no! That's. It's not three cuts, it's three slices. So this is actually k minus one, okay. Oh my. This is the silliest. I mean, there are a lot of things I'm silly debugging, but all right, that was pretty dumb. Okay. I was on oh, only. Look, I. Uh, a lot of people make mistakes. I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm gonna make a lot of them. Hope you uh, hit the follow button and hit the subscribe button. Hit the love button. Uh, give Larry some uh, love. But yeah, but one thing that I would say about this, and we're not done yet. I mean, we're almost there with 95% of the data, bear with me. Uh, this part is the easiest, um, per se, is that if you know, if you kind of, you know, uh, skimmed over it as I did because I was trying to debug, uh, I think, I, you know, we're good now, maybe. Um, is that, um, if you, I mean, if you really look at how these things are constructed, it, it will just look at each cell once. This means that this is going to be O of R times C, uh, times four even in the worst case, right? But what can you do? Well, what can you do is m memorize, right? Because how many possible inputs are there to this thing? Well, same as here, right? R times C. How many possible inputs are there to this thing? Also R times C. So all we have to do is memorization, and yeah. So that that's that's just. Uh, 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 let's just do it really quick. <laughs> and the funny thing is, it may still time out, and I'm just gonna like, I don't know, just be very sad. Say, um, oops, oops, oops. Um, yeah. All right. So then now you have something like uh, right <clears throat> and of course you have to actually use it otherwise that's just sad right so that's already uh, pretty Gucci and then of course uh, I mean, you could add a factor by not caching this uh, uh, if you're really lazy, but uh, I think that's just, I think it gets amortized out anyway to like 
and uh, all times c times 50 or something but like but it's fine And the same thing, right? Right, and then of course, once again, this is just not good enough if you don't cache uh, or if you don't use it. Right, and there you go. Now we're gonna give it a quick run, and then be very sad to remember that you know you have to allocate a little bit more. Uh, All right, so this ran pretty quickly, but of course, like we said, we have to uh, do the 50Ks, I think. So let's do it. Let's add this 10. Uh, let's see, what are we doing? All right, and let's run it real quick. Oh no, is it gonna time out? I don't know. So it, so that's the thing, right? Like this case, it's good. We have the right answers. We're very happy. Oh, oh I left in print statement somewhere, didn't I? Okay, maybe we can optimize. But before we do anything, let's make an optimization <laughs> uh, of not printing something. Uh, okay, I mean that didn't actually change it that much, uh, but I'm gonna give it a quick submit. I expected the time limit um, Maybe we get a little bit lucky and we do uh, and I it, it takes 12 seconds uh, There's some other things that you can maybe do an optimization on by doing it bottoms up to be frank is the big one um, but really I mean, I'm happy that I don't have to optimize to be frank because uh, I think I probably wrote mostly the same and then uh, Hmm, maybe I uh, Oh, I mm, don't know what I did. Oh, no, I just had a type. Oh, I forgot to do it. Okay, so that's a different one. Yeah, um, but yeah, now now that we did all this, uh, this function is going to be O of 1 because it gets amortized out um, because this is always going to be O of 1 as well after we fill out the cache, which means that it is going to be O of N or O times C, um, which is linear, right? So what is the complexity here? Uh, it's going to be O of R times C. I mean, this is the complexity for time. This is the complexity for space. And yeah, thanks for you know joining me on my on this very very long journey uh, <laughs> to this problem. I uh, hope you really enjoyed it. Hope you really uh, you know figured this out. And hope you uh, are. <sighs> this K minus one took me like. 10 minutes or something that's really sad i just didn't i misread the poem ultimately still i suppose uh i mean some of you might know that i did a 72 hour fast earlier in the week uh this problem was already another fast for me apparently so i don't know but uh, joking aside thanks for watching if you're still here uh let me show you the top of the code real quick so you want to pause the screen let me make this slightly smaller uh this is too small to see maybe but if you just want to pause and kind of look at it this is the top uh, these are my two functions. Uh, this is what I mean. I don't know if there's a technical term for it, but what I call it is uh, a memorization of a loop because you can dream, think about these things as a four state, uh, yeah, for um, a for loop, um, but memor memorize in, um, incrementally, almost like a prefix sum or suffix sum or something like this. So, yeah, so you know, uh, this is just a more visual way of doing it. And then here, um, oh. 
Yeah, and then contains Apple is the geometry part of it. There's no memorization here. Um, it's just geometry. We kind of showed it on the on the. You know, we drew it out, and then here's the bottom, which is the. Uh, and I'm gonna just skip the. Uh, I guess the cache actually fits on the page, but yeah. But this is just brute force making horizontal cuts, vertical cuts, making sure. And I don't think technically you need this part um, because this gets checked at the end, but. But it probably is an optimization that makes it slightly faster, to be frank, because you don't want to infinitely cutting a part that um, you don't want to do work on a part that doesn't have any apples. And this, of course, is all of one anyway. So uh, so it's a very cheap check. Probably needed to time to pass time out, to be honest, because even with it, we end up spending 12 seconds anyway. Right. So, yeah, um, that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Show me some love. Hit the like button. Hit it twice. No, wait, because then that unlikes it. Okay, hit it three times. Send it to your friends. Uh, send it to your enemies because, I don't know, they may not appreciate w watching this for an hour. And that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Uh, yeah, stay good. Stay healthy. To good mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye.